Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, and Friends of ISAS. Good morning and a very warm welcome to the ISAS Yusuf Ishak Institute. The ASEAN Studies Centre at ISAS is delighted to host the 22nd ASEAN Lecture. The ASEAN Lectures spotlight ASEAN's priority issues under the new stewardship of the rotational ASEAN Chair every year. It is a platform for the incoming Chair to present the Chair's priorities and expected deliverables. This year, we are honoured to showcase Brunei Darussalam's ASEAN Chairmanship 2021 under the theme, We Care, We Prepare, We Prosper. We are privileged to have Dato Erewan Pehin Yusuf, the Minister of Foreign Affairs II of Negara Brunei Darussalam to speak to us this morning. To begin the proceedings, I have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Choi Shinkwok, Director of ICS Yusuf Ishak Institute for the welcome remarks. Mr. Choi, please. Excellencies, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you and I'm glad to see that there are uh, close to uh, 250 people uh, here on, together with us on this uh, webinar. So on behalf of the ASEAN Studies Centre here at the ISIS Yusuf Ishak Institute, I warmly welcome you to the 22nd ASEAN Lecture. We are truly honoured to have Datuk Sri Satya Haji Erwan, Bin Behin Datu Pakama Jaya Haji Muhammad Yusuf, the Minister for Foreign Affairs II of Brunei Darussalam, to deliver this morning's ASEAN lecture on Brunei Darussalam's ASEAN Chairmanship 2021. It's a theme, we care, we prepare, we prosper. The ASEAN lectures of the ASEAN Study Centre have been a key platform for the incoming chairs of ASEAN to share their country's plans and priorities every year. This year, we are delighted to be able to continue this tradition, albeit through a virtual platform. I'm confident that today's lecture will serve as a significant starting point for Brunei to lay the groundwork for its plan initiative and deliverables for ASEAN 2021. Brunei is taking over the ASEAN gavel at a time of great uncertainty and intense disruption. The COVID-19 pandemic that was detected at the end of last year has now infected nearly 63 million people all over the world and led to almost 1.5 million deaths. With the cloud of COVID-19 as the pandemic still hanging over us, one of ASEAN's key priorities in the foreseeable future must be to continue to ensure that lives and livelihoods are well protected. Apart from mitigating the immediate health, economic and social impact of COVID-19, the safeguarding of regional interests also includes post-pandemic recovery plans with the aspiration to build back better, as well as the strengthening of collective efforts to enhance ASEAN's resilience in the face of emerging challenges. At the same time, the global and regional strategic environment continues to be riddled with complex developments that threaten to undermine ASEAN's centrality as well as its stability. For example, Major power rivalries are unlikely to ease, notwithstanding the upcoming change in Washington. Multilateralism will continue to be under pressure. And other non-traditional security challenges like climate change and humanitarian crisis still loom on the horizon. Yet despite all these seemingly intractable challenges, ASEAN's fundamentals remain sound and its prospects promising. It has a growing population that is relatively young, well-educated, hardworking, and poised to form the world's largest free trade area with five of its dialogue partners when the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership comes into force. As the recently concluded 37th ASEAN Summit and related summits have shown, ASEAN has maintained its momentum for regional integration ASEAN centrality and global engagement 
even in the face of adverse circumstances. With the combined efforts of the Chair, Member States and the Secretariat, ASEAN has been able to achieve several key outcomes in 2020, including regional cooperation initiatives such as the adoption of ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework and its implementation plan, the launch of the ASEAN Regional Reserve of Medical Supplies for Public Health Emergencies, and the adoption of the Declaration of an ASEAN Travel Corridor Arrangement Framework. Its continued work with dialogue partners and other organizations has also sustained and been demonstrated most clearly by the signing of the RCEP. Though not a panacea for the current crisis, these initiatives lay the foundation for ASEAN to recover better next year. Going forward, ASEAN needs to continue contributing to regional peace, uphold a rules-based multilateral order, and enhance its institutional capacity to remain relevant in a changing world. These considerations must be realized behind the theme of Brunei's ASEAN Chairmanship 2020. We care, we prepare, we prosper. And its three key priority areas in caring for the people mm -hmm. and each other's well-being, preparing for future opportunities and challenges, and prospering together as a unified region. We all look forward to hearing Dr. Arawan's insights into Brunei's theme and initiatives in today's lecture. Before I give the floor to our distinguished speaker, please allow me to briefly introduce him. Dr. Erwan Payne Yusuf is the Minister for Foreign Affairs II of Negara Brunei Darussalam, a position that he has held since September 2018. Prior to that, Dr. Erwan was Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade II and served as the Chairman of Brunei's uh, Economic Development Board. He has also had experience, uh, extensive experience in the civil service and held several key appointments, including serving as the focal point for ASEAN ministers on agriculture and forestry meetings, the lead negotiator for the Brunei Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, and chairman of the ASEAN Australia New Zealand Free Trade Agreement negotiations. Dr. Erwan has served as the permanent secretary of the Minister of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and was the ASEAN SOM leader for Brunei Darussalam. He retired from the civil service in October 2018, when he was appointed deputy minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. And with that a brief introduction, uh, may I now give the floor to Dr. Erwan. Over to you, sir. Thank you, um, Mr. Choi Shinkwap, director of the ICS. Yusuf Ishab Institute. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and a very good morning to you all. Let me first thank you, Mr. Choi, for your kind words of welcome and introduction. I am honored to join you and all members and guests today, albeit virtually, at this 22nd ASEAN lecture. I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Institute for being awarded the ASEAN Prize 2020 last month. It is a great privilege to share with everyone the priorities of Brunei Darussalam's chairmanship of ASEAN next year. Indeed, the world has changed significantly since the last time we chat in 2013, especially with events over the past few months. Some have even said that 2020 has been the most difficult year for a generation. Of all the challenges that ASEAN has faced in its, 20, in its 53 years of existence, none I would say have been more disruptive than the COVID-19 pandemic. Its impacts are far and wide and go beyond just health and matters of well-being. 
even though ASEAN has already experienced various challenges in the past, such as SARS, H1N1, a financial meltdown, as well as food and energy crisis, nothing could have prepared us as we were confronted with all these challenges almost at once. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, we have seen every sector under the ASEAN community put to the test. It has exposed weaknesses we never knew we had in our system, especially with cross-sectoral and cross-pillar challenges. Nevertheless, ASEAN leaders have shown great resolve to work together towards a full recovery. We all know that this is going to be a long and arduous journey, but it is one that ASEAN member states will have to make it together if we are to get through this pandemic successfully and come out much stronger. Above all else, ASEAN needs to be better prepared and promote a more strategic, holistic, coordinated, and cross-sectoral response. It will require us to reimagine and re-engineer how ASEAN and its institutions work at the most fundamental level, from the practicality of the community pillars to how we provide assistance to one another. It is in this spirit that His Majesty Sultan Haji Hasna Bolkiah of Brunei announced our chairmanship at the last summit, we care, we prepare, we prosper. The team aims to underscore ASEAN's collective pursuit to improve the well-being and livelihood of its people. It emphasizes that ASEAN needs to work together to realize shared interests and confront challenges of common concern. All this will ultimately enable the people of ASEAN to thrive, prosper, and secure sustainable development for the benefit of present and future generations. <clears throat> Broadly speaking, Brunei Darussalam's chairmanship of ASEAN will focus on three main priorities. First, we will look to harness the caring nature of ASEAN during this time of great hardship. Many have lost loved ones, lost their livelihoods, and even to some extent, lost their hope. But they are not alone. It is vital that they know they can rely on their ASEAN family for help. It is therefore important for ASEAN member states to assist each other and pursue initiatives that bring benefits that are truly felt by the people. This includes efforts to ensure that they can swiftly recover from the impacts of COVID-19 collectively and even on a personal level. With much anticipation placed on vaccines, this will certainly be a major focus next year. In 2021, ASEAN must seriously work with partners to coordinate for coordinated access to safe and affordable vaccines in a timely manner. Moreover, we need to place greater attention on the human consequences of this pandemic. In our region and beyond, we have seen the psychological toll that multiple quarantines and repeated lockdowns have had on people's well-being, adults, youth, and children alike. These often overlook illnesses such as mental health issues pose a threat to our societies and must be addressed quickly if we are to foster the resilience needed in the future. This is by no means a short-term measure and there are no easy solutions. We have always stated that our people 
are our future. Therefore, looking after their health and well-being must be one of our long-term community building efforts post-COVID-19. But that is just one side of the point, as the pandemic has also changed the way people work, <clears throat> people work, live, and study. <clears throat> Teaching, learning, meetings have all moved from the classrooms and from the boardrooms to online and virtual conference platforms. Caring for our people means helping them adapt and thrive in this new normal. Therefore, ASEAN needs to look into its human resources and make sure that they are future ready by enhancing their knowledge and skills to adapt to the changing world brought about not just by COVID-19, but also by the fourth industrial revolution. At the same time, we must also care for our people's safety online. There are new and unknown cybersecurity threats, such as from fake news, cybercrime, cyberterrorism, and online radicalization. This is why ASEAN will be taking a comprehensive strategic approach in addressing the challenges and opportunities of the fourth IR that incorporates political security, economic, and social cultural perspectives. The second broad priority for Brunei Darussalam's chairmanship is to prepare ASEAN for the future. This is to ensure that ASEAN can adapt and remain relevant so our people can take advantage of opportunities as well as overcome any future challenges. Essentially, we need to be poised and ready with measures that enable us to launch our recovery efforts and quickly achieve sustainable growth. In a rapidly changing and interconnected world, this is not an easy task to achieve, especially when there is so much uncertainty surrounding us. These uncertainties are manifold and stem from geopolitical and economic shifts, such as changing major power relations, as well as non-traditional security challenges, be it in the seas, in the air, on land, and online. An unsafe and uncertain situation will disenchant businesses, discourage investors, and deter people-to-people -people exchanges, making our region seem like a weak spot in the global landscape. Certainly, we cannot let this happen. ASEAN needs to maintain peace and stability as a top priority for the region. To this end, we must ensure our region is governed by a rules-based architecture, constantly adhering international law and multilateral rules for the mutual benefit of all. This is important to ensure that every country is on a level playing field, regardless of its size and standing, big or small, developed or developing. At the end of the day, we should all be held accountable by the same set of rules. In this vein, ASEAN is negotiating a code of conduct in the South China Sea with China, which is consistent with the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea, or UNCLOS, and universally recognized principles of international law. At the same time, we will continue utilizing ASEAN-led processes to promote constructive relations with all our partners including and among the major powers. While it is important for ASEAN to remain neutral, we must also continue to take a position on matters of importance to us in a mutually respectful, peaceful, and cooperative manner. 
This is the value of multilateralism as upheld by ASEAN and its partners. ASEAN will continue to play its part supporting global efforts in order to address those issues most crucial to the region and globally. Notably, next year, ASEAN will continue working with partners on addressing climate change in the run-up to the 26th ASEAN Climate Change Conference of the parties. For ASEAN to be able to operate collectively and in solidarity, we need to maintain mutual trust with each other, uphold ASEAN centrality, and remain undivided. And thus, the benefits and opportunities for member states in ASEAN shall always be maintained greater than the sum of its parts. This is the key to facing future challenges. This was what brought member states together over 50 years ago. And we share a common interest to overcome challenges and prosper. Ultimately, we all aspire for the common good. During Brunei Darussalam's chairmanship, we are committed to continue to keeping ASEAN relevant and important to all its member states. Central to these efforts is, of course, the need to strengthen ASEAN's engagement with its existing partners and, where necessary, establish new ones. Given the complexity of today's world, it is in ASEAN's interest to promote strong and diverse partnership, be it through its dialogue, sectoral, or development partners. Undertaking this endeavor will help build mutual respect, secure mutual benefits, and elevate our community efforts to greater heights. It will also demonstrate that ASEAN is forward-looking and proactive and a strategic partner in the region and the world. The third priority for Brunei Darussalam next year will look at creating opportunities for all and enhancing sustainable prosperity in the region. Over the past year, we have witnessed the pandemic aggravate and accelerate a whole range of trends that have challenged us from all sides. Globalization and economic integration came under great stress, while rising protectionism and self-serving nationalism, whether intentional or unintentional, have risked prosperity and constructive cooperation. But 2021 could be a turning point. After all that we have been through in recent months and even years, our people strongly desire a return to stability, prosperity and development. Basically, they just want certainty. Therefore, ASEAN can seize this opportunity to adjust to the disruptions and position itself ahead in the post-COVID-19 era. With the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Partnership Agreement or RCEP that was launched in 2013 and completed and signed recently, we can now prioritize new endeavors to advance our region's economic interests. All in all, we need to focus on complementing each other's economies rather than engage in unhealthy competition so ASEAN can realize its full economic potential. This would make ASEAN a more attractive market to our external partners, support local businesses, and make them more competitive, and most of all, be able to build inclusive economies with greater participation from all members of the society. ASEAN can engage in new FTAs with more partners. 
enhance existing agreements such as with India, China, Australia, and New Zealand, among others, resist protectionism, and commit to a rules-based and non-discriminatory multilateral trading system. However, one goal that continues to elude us is the region-to-region -region FTA with the European Union. Perhaps the lessons we have learned on both sides from the COVID-19 pandemic can reset our approach and spur us forward towards this FTA, which could spike and sustain our trade and economic cooperation. Or perhaps our set is a good point where we can stop and take stock of what we have before considering new FTAs. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, ASEAN has a lot of work to do in the years ahead. Having been part of, us, of the ASEAN family for over 35 years, Brunei Darussalam has always attached great importance to what the association has brought for the people in this region. Generally speaking, this region is better than it was many decades ago. Millions have been lifted out of extreme poverty. Standards of living have improved and they keep on improving. We have enhanced connectivity and enabled prosperity. Economically, ASEAN has surpassed the rest of the world in terms of GDP per capita growth since the 70s. And despite all we have faced, we remain on our way to become the fourth largest economy by 2050. All this shows that ASEAN is moving in the right direction. And most of all, it shows ASEAN's collective will and determination to get things done for its people. Regardless of the challenges ahead of us, I have every confidence that we will continue to prevail together. This is because in the middle of difficulty, there lies an opportunity to usher in a brighter future. When the Asian financial crisis struck in 97, ASEAN leaders defied calls for protectionism and announced an ASEAN vision for 2020, which marked the beginning of what we now know as the ASEAN community. So perhaps the COVID-19 crisis of 2020 can inspire the same strong response from ASEAN today. It is therefore upon us in governments to create an opportunity for a better, more united, dynamic and sustainable ASEAN community. As the incoming chairman, Brunei Darussalam will continue to be a reliable partner to all and work to help manage uncertainties that we may face in the years to come. We look forward to working together with everyone towards building a more caring, prepared and prosperous home in Southeast Asia. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished guests, Thank you for joining us today to hear Dr. Erewan's vision for Brunei's ASEAN Chairmanship 2021.